Hello. Today I'm doing another itching video. My cat has decided to join me. <laughs> and uh, as usual from the magician's itching, we're going to be looking at today hexagram number 14. Dayu. Oh, pardon me. Forgot to silence this. There we go. Hexagram. <laughs> Hexagram number 14. I haven't done one of these in a while. And this is Dayu or Great Holdings. You can see in the hexagram, it has a very particular quality to it that all of the the well, the lower trigram is heaven, the upper trigram is sun, or primordial fire. And so you can see that of the six lines in this hexagram, five of these lines are solid yang lines. Just in, like in the previous hexagram number 13, it's the same thing, except that this time, the yin line, the single yin line, is in the most pri primary spot, line 5. And this is the spot that's traditionally associated with the king. So it's the ruling line, the powerful line, the governing line. And you would think, at first thought, that, that having a weak king is kind of a bad thing. But the metaphor that you find here of um, hexagram number 14 is of a situation where you have a, a ruler that is relatively humble, surrounded by powerful people. And so you're not going to... You're not going to dominate them with great force. That's not possible. And instead, what you're going to do is try to win them over with uh, the promotion of virtue and, and, and good behaviors. So the image associated with this, if you've got heaven below and the sun is above, that means that Unlike the previous one where the sun was low in the sky because it was the opposite, the heaven was above the sun. Here, the sun above heaven, it says the sun is high in the heavens. So this is the sun at noon, the sun when it's at its apex. It's the sun in splendor. So the sun shines on everything and it's therefore a very beneficial hexagram. A lot of times hexagrams that have the sun trigram, they're frequently auspicious. They're lucky hexagrams. And the sun and heaven are both powerful auspicious symbols. And they both progress upwards to the heavens. The main description of the hexagram says, he who has much, great success, riches and virtue. So a good augury in general, you could say. The part of the great work says, the superior individual suppresses the evil and upholds the virtuous. He promotes charity and obeys heaven's orders. Most are on his side, which is symbolic of the hexagram and that all of these powerful yang lines, or rather most of these powerful yang lines are supporting the yin line in the ruling position. The Confucian commentary says, because he has splendor, which is the sun, and vigor, which is heaven, he causes the strong to agree to his will, being responsive to heaven and doing things at the right time, success is won. So these are, these are good signs for the purpose of success. The individual lines, line one at the bottom says, do not mingle with others, stay away from the wrong. If you're not involved, there's no blame, even in trouble. Consider potential pitfalls to avoid harm. Line two, the merchant wagons are full and ready to leave for their destination. If you have a goal, leaving now, you cannot fail. So this is, line two is often the symbol of, of, a, of a beginning, right? And here is the symbol of how the merchant wagons are full, there, there's prosperity, and now you must move forward with those goals. And, and you're aligned, line two aligns with line five. So, and, and they're the only two lines that complement each other here directly in that they're, you know, a yin and a yang line. So now you must begin marching upwards, you could say, forwards. Line three, a duke can afford to pay a king's price, but an inferior person would ruin himself 
if he tried. Now this is a bit of a mystery, mysterious sounding line. And what you have to understand is that it's the top line of the third, uh, uh, the, the third line or the top line of the, of the lower trigram. And in this line, you have somebody who is an inferior person trying to act like a duke and therefore able to pay the king's price, but he's not. So um, it's that you're acting too prematurely and you're acting without sufficient resources. And if you were if you were just focused on the resources you have, you're going to do all right. But if you're trying to be ostentatious, then you're going to ruin yourself. And that's so it's a warning. And that's often you see the third lines are often very tricky because they represent that gap, the bridge between the lower and the upper trigram. In line four, it says he is wealthy but modest, humble in success, no error. So this is line four is the duke. The duke is wealthy, but he behaves modestly anyways, and that's an auspicious thing. Line five, in society he is sincere and confident, earning respect. Dignity is the greatest wealth, good fortune. So this is someone who is poor, but rich in dignity, honest and bold in demeanor, and thus wins great regard. That's, that's Confucian commentary on the subject. So this is the, the king does not have a lot of military power. He doesn't even have a lot of resources. He's surrounded by powerful people and he aligns them to him and therefore creates prosperity. So it's saying, don't, don't think about your hard resources. Think about your soft resources. That's what the yin line in this context represents. And line six, the line of the sage says, blessings protected by heaven, good luck and success in all endeavors. So here you have the force of heaven is underneath. It's the lower trigram and it's, its emanation is such that you are, you are blessed in what you're doing. You're, you've got um, the opportunity to continue to prosper um, if you get this line. So that's, that's basically it for this hexagram. It's a very positive, it's one of the more positive hexagrams of the I Ching. It's also generally one of the more straightforwards apart from that bit about um, dukes and kings prices and things like that. Uh, if you get this hexagram, it's generally going to be fairly lucky to you, except a little bit in line one where it says don't don't you know get involved yet, and line three where it says don't overstep. But otherwise, it's very auspicious. That's everything for today. If you haven't already checked it out, please be sure to take a look at the the rest of the hello. <laughs> be sure to take a look at the rest of the the I Ching series, and it has its own playlist in this channel, and the other videos in this channel. Um, in particular, the Yifa Society playlist, which includes all the I Ching videos and other teachings on, on Qigong and meditation. And if you're interested in learning a detailed training program in spiritual practice, then take a look at the Yifa Society. You can... Uh, contact me about, about joining in a detailed curriculum of spiritual practice. Also, if whether or not you're interested in something that dedicated, be sure to sign up for the um, mailing list for the Ifa Society and for, the, for my teachings. It's free, and if you sign up in the email you get when you sign up, don't, don't delete it, take a look. There's a link there that will give you a free PDF copy of the Path and the Power, which is my translation and commentary on the Tao Te Ching, which is an excellent companion for the magician Zi Ching, which you can get on Amazon. And uh, yeah, so, so if you subscribe to the mailing list, the Path and the Power is free, and you will also get a monthly email, not more often than once a month, that will have um, links and uh, writings about different things that I've been teaching um, sometimes including things that you won't find anywhere else that I'll do, especially for the mailing list. So be sure to, to join that and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Oh, and feel free to share this video anywhere you think it will be welcome to, to watch. Thank you.